I really need to script this kind of stuff. Saves a lot of time. Take eight. Welcome to another episode of Alpha Audio. Today we are going to talk about network switches. Yeah, again. <laughs> it's kind of a trademark. Um, but the reason we do this is because we find it very interesting that a device like this, cheap Edamax or a better Netgear uh, 108E, can have such an influence on sound. And I know that a lot of people say, yeah, it's data, uh, it arrives or it doesn't, or it's corrupted or it isn't, and it doesn't matter. Well, <laughs> it's not about the data. The data will be fine on a network. It's a very robust protocol. I mean, TCP uh, IP is, uh, is been around, has been around for ages now, and it works. Otherwise, the internet wouldn't work. But still, if you just sit down and you have a good, decent system that you know very well, you can hear a difference. I mean, the staging is different. The nuances are different. The voice will get presented a little bit different. Uh, and um, it's really hard to measure. But let's be honest, not everything is measurable in the world of hi-fi audio. And we can measure a lot, but we can measure everything. That's just a fact. Um, so that, that's, that intrigues us, uh, the difference in sound quality. And the thing that people are still focusing on the data part. A couple of years back, we uh, did a, a big test with uh, some friends from the industry uh, that helped us to, uh, to measure some stuff on switches like common mode noise. And there are differences in common mode noise. And I think if we look at that side, the noise part, that can influence your streamer, that in its turn can influence your DAC, that can influence your preamp and power amp. I think we have to look on, on the noise part. So um, the reason I'm doing this video is that this is the first big test of switches uh, in which we measure ourselves with help of the industry friends, of course, because it's really, really hard. Now, the other part of the video, uh, I'm gonna explain how we measure and what we measure and with which uh, equipment we do that, um, because it's, it's quite interesting and there are big, there are some differences uh, to be seen on the, on the spectral analyzer and the scope. So, which switches are we gonna test? Well, that's the funny part of the story, actually, <laughs> because we're not uh, doing only audiophile switches or very expensive switches, we're gonna compare a cheap Atomax with a cheap Cisco, with a cheap Netgear, with a cheap TP-Link, uh, some weird cheap PoE switches, uh, but also a more expensive D-Link switch with an internal power supply. Uh, the well-known D-Link DGS-108, uh, which Paul Punk uses, and AQVox uses, um, yeah, and some other ones. I think, no, no, Fidelizer used a Cisco switch. Uh, well, practically the same device, I think. And we're gonna compare it to an audio file switch with an internal linear power supply. And I have uh, a high-end Cisco industry-grade switch as well to be measured. But that's not all, because what in our listening test, we noticed that the power supply of the switch makes a huge impact on the noise. Well, that's why we want to use a iFi uh, power adapter as well. This one is 12 volts. And we're gonna compare that to the stock power supply. And let's get this out of the way. A well-known linear power supply as well. So, we're going to listen to this. I'm not going to listen, but my colleagues are going to listen to the switches and uh, the power supply differences. They're going to listen, and I'm going to compare it to my measurements and see if there is a relation between what I measure and I think is good and what they hear and what they think is good. If there is a correlation to be found, then we have something. Uh, because I'm quite sure they will hear a difference between these switches. Um, 
I think I hear a difference between all the switches. At least I heard a difference between, uh, you know, the, the fiber optic tweak and my now better copper solution with a high-end Zixel switch, which are tweaked in the software. And there was a big difference in uh, between the non-tweaked Zixel and the tweaked Zixel. It has something to do with priorities. I'll write an article about it later. But, um, well, so we're going to measure some cheap-ass stock switches with stock power supplies, tweak them with better power supplies. And we're going to do some industry-grade stuff and a high-end switch with linear power supply. Um, let's get to the measurement part now. Thank you. Well, lately, uh, well, recently, sorry, we bought a tech box uh, listen device. And it's not listening like listening, but a line impedance stabilizer network. And what you can do with that is, well, of course, you can do EMC pre-compliance testing. It's built for that, but we are measuring uh, power line noise, conducted noise. Uh, so no radiation noise or EMC, of, uh, well, it is EMC noise, but we measure the power supply uh, from the device under test, the DUT, and the listen device um, filters out the noise, so to say, and puts it into a spectrum analyzer. So we can see how the power supply performs in the device in terms of noise. And it's very interesting because, uh, well, most amplifiers have, have a power supply, of course, but we can measure up to 30 megahertz, I think, this device will do. Up to 30 megahertz, what the noise is. That's, of course, completely irrelevant for uh, audio devices, but up to, I think, 10 megahertz is, is interesting to see. For the switches, we were very curious whether a uh, linear power supply performs very differently from a switch mode power supply. Because, well, we're all into linear power supplies and I'm not going to spoil anything. Uh, yes, there is a difference and there is a big difference in how they cope with the internal switching part from the switches, the chipsets and all the data packages. So what, it, what can I show you right now? Oh, we have a switch, I'm not going to tell you which one. And you can see on the spectrum analyzer that it's pretty clean. Um, but, well, that's all interesting, but there's no load on the switch yet. So we inject it with uh, white noise. And that white noise, white noise goes up to 30 megahertz with this uh, function generator. So we inject with an Ethernet cable wide noise into the switch and see what happens. Well, let me show you. The first test we do is a switch which just idles. Uh, it's now not being loaded by any signal at all. And you can see that there is already some noise. It's very, very low, by the way. This is, uh, let's see... Uh, the first spike is at 5.7 megahertz and it's minus 78 dB. So that, that's very low. But we can prove that, um, that there is nothing if we switch off the, the listen device. You can see it's now disappearing, uh, all the spikes. So there is no noise being picked up by the measuring cable at all. Now, now we switch it on and you can see it's, it's back. Uh, this is the first spike, it's at 5.7 megahertz. That, that's pretty good. So nothing uh, weird here. What we do next is we load the, uh, the switch with some white noise. So now we had to, okay, we freeze this one and we do some video averaging on this and we switch on one of the wide noise uh, signal loads. So our function generator generates 500 millivolts of wide noise with an output impedance of 100 ohms and that's compliant to what a switch wants. Well it doesn't want wide noise, it wants data. But uh, oh, let me first do some clear writing. And then we do another video average. Otherwise it keeps the same pattern. 
Um, so this shows how good the power supply will filter out the noise that is being put in to the switch. So if you have a lot of devices on your switch, the noise will go up. But how much of that noise will get into the grid? Well, this one is doing pretty well, as you can see. Uh, it's not huge. It's around minus 70 dB, which is good. There's a big difference between the switches right here. And there's a big difference between switch mode power supplies, linear power supplies, internal power supplies and external power supplies. So uh, that's something we noticed during all our tests. Next, we do a second load and see what happens. So now we freeze this one. We go onto a new trace. We do some clear writing and then we do some video averaging and we put on a second wide noise load and see if it goes up well very very slightly it just broke the minus 68 db i think so that's very good as well so no weird stuff here so this is being what we now measure is the port to power uh, so how much leakage if, is there to the, from the power to the external grid. Another thing we were curious about, and now we're out of traces, so we can do that um, <laughs> in another new trace, but we'll just, you know, freeze this one and uh, we just blank, no, we blank this one and we blank this one and we do some clear writing here. Okay, because what we're now gonna do is see how good the port to port isolation is. We inject one port with white noise and we see what comes back from the other port. And as you can see, it's much higher than from the power support from the port to the power supply. So the power supply filters out pretty good. But in between the ports there is higher noise and it's well minus 52 dB I think. And as you can see uh, well we have some well some interference between the ports. How this is actually possible um, I'm curious because all the ports should be isolated in pairs. Be behind every port is a transformer and in theory these ports should, shouldn't leak anything but as you can see it leaks and this is also a big difference between all the switches. So that's the measurements we do. Um, there's some extra stuff we uh, actually do like port to power and power to port as well. We measure that in a different way not with a listen because that's impossible but we inject noise into the port with, uh, with a function generator and see what comes out. It's mostly the same pattern from port to power actually. Well, I hope you find the short explanation uh, interesting. Uh, I'm not sure when this test will be finished because it's a lot of work and uh, we have like eight or nine switches to measure, including some professional ones we have uh, uh, laying around. So we're going to compare some very cheap switches, uh, normal D-Links, normal Netgears, normal TP-Links, uh, but also some more expensive ones like this one, it's an audio file switch. And we have some professional switches from D-Link and Cisco as well. And even a, I'm not sure if I'm going to pick a very expensive Netgear because I have to break it out of our server rack and that's not very convenient. Um, so I hope you find this interesting and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.